Good morning, FSPA from the Wyndham Resort in sunny Orlando, Florida. Today's the second day of the 2017 state convention and this year's theme is all about transforming the future of journalism. I'm Sophia. And I'm Jack. On today's show, we have a story on a student journalism program that worked its way to success. An exclusive interview with one of the many writers here at FSPA. A look at how technology is changing the world of journalism and much more. Stay tuned, FSPA. Here at FSPA, journalism rules supreme. From broadcast to yearbook to newspaper, journalism has come a long way since the first newspaper was published back in 1690. But that doesn't mean that newspapers are obsolete. In fact, the Patriot Post has been going strong for over 15 years and continues to ignite passion for many emerging journalists. From camera phones to DSLRs, typewriters to laptops, and diaries to newspapers, it's safe to say that journalism has come a long way. But of course, everyone and everything has to start somewhere. American Heritage School's newspaper, The Patriot Post, has grown from a teacher's idea to a nationally acclaimed award-winning publication. The history of The Patriot Post is simple. I started work at American Heritage teaching and I thought that was kind of strange that such a nice high school did not have a newspaper to keep its kids informed. So it took us a while to eventually move up to now where we have eight pages of color. We've looked at some of the papers and I think stylistically we've come a long way because one of the papers like unfolded is a approximately the same size as one of our papers folded. The newspaper has changed drastically over time with the crew's dedication, but it's the executive board that makes the Patriot Post what it is. I think that's the, the one of the biggest things that affects the Patriot Post is who's running it. Um, and just in terms of like content of the articles, design and everything. I think there's definitely been a difference in what we cover. I feel like now especially, we're covering a lot more school news. We're um, telling the students what they want to know about what's happening in school and things that are affecting them more. Whereas in the past, it was a lot of things that were happening outside of school. It's just interesting to see that um, she's that it's changed so much despite it being the same person running it. I think that's fascinating. Just recently, American Scholastic Press Association didn't just give us a first place, okay, but best newspaper, which I find just amazing when we just came from nothing. The way, the direction, the paper is heading right now, it can only get better, and this year was definitely uh, a sign of that. An idea that started as a small spark and blew into full flame has given young journalists at American Heritage the opportunity to ignite the future. For the Florida Scholastic Press Association, I'm Adrienne Ross, Orlando, Florida. Maybe I should have done newspaper instead of broadcast. Wow, Jack, having second thoughts? Hey, you never know. In fact, let's send you over to Noah with an exclusive in-studio interview with one of the Patriot Post staff writers. I'm here with Alec Chow, who's actually a writer and photographer for the Patriot Post. Alec, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Alec, can you tell me just a little bit about how long you've been in the Patriot Post and like what made you want to join in the first place? Uh, I started at the Post about a year ago. Uh, my desire to start was based entirely around the fact that I enjoy watching the news, I enjoy reading the news, and I guess I just want to be a part of that world. So to join the Post was a means to that end. And how have the uh, opportunities that you get here at FSPA contributed to that growth? I think FSPA has shown me better ways to better represent that uh, content in our paper. I think it's really important to ensure that all views are being represented and seeing how people write content that's of a similar manner and write opinion pieces especially that are representative of all viewpoints no matter which viewpoint the writer themselves holds I think is really important and I think that's something I've learned here. It's a valuable skill. Alex, thank you again for being here and now after this quick commercial break I'll send it back to Jack and Sophie. It's one thing to share information through words, but as many people say, seeing is believing. With Periscope, it's so easy to live stream and stay informed. All you need to do is push go live and you're instantly connected with others. Periscope, transforming the way we see the world. We've shed some light on the oldest form of journalism, but what about today? Well, with technology continuing to transform, journalists are finding new ways to spread the news right as it happens. Now let's send over to Luigi with more on the journalistic powerhouse that is social media. I don't know about you, but 
Recently, I found myself looking at my phone more than looking at a newspaper. In fact, according to the Pew Research Center, 62% of Americans get their news from social media and only 20% from newspapers. Now, with social media being such a heavy influence on the youth today, maybe it's not so bad that this transformation in journalism allows people to get their news from Twitter instead of tabloids. If you really think about it, old print news is technically old, so is it still really news? See, I read the same article that I read three days ago in a one-sentence notification from Facebook. And they say computers are slow. While some people may think that digital media facilitates misinformation, tabloids and other print sources of fake news have existed for years as well. Now it's crazy to think that with this in my hands, I have the ability to see anything that's happening around the world at any given moment right at my fingertips. Compared to printed papers, digital news is more accessible, faster, and is transforming into something brighter. As team broadcast deadlines are approaching, the competition is really heating up. Just like the weather. Let's send it over to Gabriela for her FSPA forecast. Good morning, FSPA. I'm Gabriela Gutierrez here with your weather forecast for Orlando. Today we will have a burning high of 95, which will fall to a low of 73. So make sure to protect yourself from the heat while you're out and about covering events. Tomorrow will be slightly cooler, but still hot with a high of 92 and a low of 72. Today has a 20% chance of precipitation, which will be dropping to 10% tomorrow. For everyone hoping to enjoy the theme parks this weekend, no need to worry, because this nice weather will be sticking around. I don't want to let this lovely weather go to waste, so I'll send it back to Jack and Sophia. Well, sadly, it's our time to go. Make sure to follow us at FSPA on Twitter and like us on Facebook. I'm Jack. And I'm Sophia.